Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie and I live in Utah Zone 6 7 and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about whether or not you should water after it rains. Now here in Utah we live in a very dry climate. It's been a pretty wet spring. We've had a lot of good precipitation but I've been wondering if I should start my irrigation. Now I do have to tell you last week I did start my irrigation because we had a couple of weeks of quite dry, dry weather but it rained yesterday and I wanted to know if I should be watering, you know, if I should skip an irrigation. Because the current wisdom is if it rains, you should turn off your irrigation. But how do you know if it rained enough to turn off your irrigation? That's what we want to talk about today. So today we have a couple of different tools to talk about. First one is, you know, this is not a screwdriver. This is a tool for one of my string trimmers, but it's long and skinny and it's strong and it's gonna be easy to push down. You can use a screwdriver, you can use a soil probe, anything that you want. But the first thing that we're gonna do is look and see how wet it is and how deep that moisture has gotten into the soil. Now, hopefully this is good enough so you can see what I'm doing, but what I'm gonna do is take this probe and I'm gonna push it in the soil as far as down as I can get it. We're actually hitting rocks. I'll show you a picture of what my soil looks like so you can kind of understand why I'm hitting rocks and having a hard time finding a spot where I'm not hitting rocks. But this does go down quite a ways. I can tell that I've hit a rock because it's hard, but it seems like at least the moisture has gone down, is good enough down that deep without hitting rocks. Now that's good enough for grass because grass, that's about as deep as the roots are gonna get. I do know that if you drought stress Kentucky bluegrass, you can get, you know, this is an eight inch length. You can get roots that go down eight inches, but I'm hitting a lot of rocks down about four inches, but it's wet down four inches. And I know that because it easily goes into the soil until I hit the rocks. Now, if it was too dry, I would not be able to easily push it into the soil. And I would be able to tell that I hadn't hit rocks because I can actually hear it scraping against the rocks. So let's go look at an area in my food forest where I've actually brought in topsoil. So we're above this impermeable rock layer. So now we're in an area where the test is gonna be better because I know I'm not gonna hit rocks. I may hit a few pieces of wood, but I'm hitting resistance about six inches down. So the water has penetrated down at least six inches. Maybe a little bit further. It's starting to get tight a little bit further down. So I do know that the irrigation that I've done and that the rain that has occurred has pushed water down six inches. Now that's not good enough for this food forest. I may need to turn on the irrigation and let it run for about three hours and push that water down a little deeper. Now, when you, when you push water down deeper, that means, you, and you're in an area like a food forest with deep rooted perennials and trees and shrubs, you don't do the three hours every week, you do it every couple of weeks. But one way to tell if that's going to be enough is to come in and see how deep the water is, how deep the moisture is, and see if it's as deep as you think it should be. You can use, a, if you don't have a long enough screwdriver, you can go actually use a shovel to do that. Now this is a rain, rain gauge that I got because I really do like information. I like to know, I like to have data to know exactly what I'm dealing with. It really helps on knowing whether or not I need to water and whether or not I need to protect my plants. I'll link a video up at the top that talks a little bit about temperatures and planting tomatoes and peppers. And in that one, I used a lot of data. But this gauge right here, this top part right here is an inch. You know, so if it fills up to the top, that's an inch of water but you can see how much water we got yesterday in the rainstorm. It was a little over a 10th of an inch. Now it rained most of the day off and on, it felt like there was a lot of rain. It felt like there was enough water, but it really actually wasn't. So let me go down and talk to you and tell you how much water a lawn needs and how you should know whether or not you should water. Now lawns actually need about an inch to an inch and a half of water per week. So Obviously, that amount of rain that we got yesterday was not enough. I like to spread that inch to an inch and a half over two to three days, just depending on the temperatures that we're having outside. This time of year, I'd like to do it about twice a week because it evaporates slower. I'll water less time, but more often in the summer when the temperatures are higher because of the evaporation. 
Now, I showed you how you can tell how deep the water is penetrated, how deep the moisture is into your soil. So if you combine those two different things, number one, know how much water you've gotten when it rains, know how much water your irrigation system is putting out. You can actually put catch cups out around your property. Um, I'll, I'll try and find a link on how to do that so that you can tell how much water your irrigation system is putting out. That way you can know an inch to an inch and a half. See how long it takes your catch cups to fill up an inch. Divide that by the number of days that you want to water and then figure out how much time it's going to take to get to that inch to inch and a half of water for lawn. That way you can know how much to water your lawns. And then you can use your probes to see if it's actually working. On my food forest and in my drought tolerant front yard, I just use a probe to see how deep the moisture is and then figure out when to water that way. If you have any other thoughts on irrigation or when to water, I would love to hear them. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.